Hello and welcome back to the Tom FM channel. Today we've got some more Formula One content for you and it's the Hungarian Grand Prix today which is one of my favourite tracks of the entire season so I think hopefully it's going to be a pretty good race here today for us. We're currently third in the driver's standings behind Charles Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton uh, still quite a way off them as well so we need to get some good wins and results under our belts including today in Hungary to close the gap to them. As we look at the constructor standing as well you can see we are getting closer to Ferrari within 50 points of Ferrari now but we're still almost 80 points behind Mercedes at the moment so still a long way to go to catch those up but there is still quite a long, long time left in this season so hopefully we can catch up with them at some point soon. Heading into today's race as you can see we've had some engine upgrades which is really good. Spark plugs have come and so that's going to help us with our engine in this race so even more engine upgrades for us. We've worked really hard on the engine upgrades this season and uh, we've still got the best engine in the game at the moment as things stand no one else is coming too close to us so that's pretty good we've made some really good progress and development with the engine which i'm really pleased with and as you can see we've got some engine we've got some chassis upgrades not engine upgrades chassis upgrades coming in for the next race in belgium so that's also going to help us out that's quite a big upgrade as well so hopefully that'll deliver quite a big performance to our chassis and as you can see here we are pending three upgrades to our engine at the moment as well uh, so these are new engine parts of course not necessarily upgrades but hopefully they'll help our engine perform a little bit better for the closure of the season we'll probably have to take some penalties towards the end of the season because we might have to replace some of these engine parts towards the end of the season as well because i'm not quite sure they'll manage all that way but it's not too big of a deal if we take all the penalties at the same time it's only going to affect us for one race and we've already seen some penalties taken by other drivers in game and of course in real life as well as we head into qualifying then for the Hungarian Grand Prix, I'm pretty confident and we us we're leaving it to our, our usual late qualifying part. I don't know, we usually leave it pretty late, don't we, in qualifying? Just because I like to get the lap done and I don't want to waste my tyres too much in case we have to get another lap done sort of thing like that. So as we head into the actual flying lap here in Hungary, I'm pretty confident. Like This is one of my favourite tracks. I always do pretty well in Hungary. I remember back in the day, I used to play a game called F1 Career Challenge. I don't know if you ever played it or not, but that was the first F1 game I ever owned, actually. That was on the, the GameCube I had it. So that was it goes a long back, that, a long way back, that does. But I really enjoyed Hungary on that race, on that game, sorry, the Hungarian race. And it was one of the first races that I ever won on that game. So I remember at the time having a pretty fond memories. But as you can see here, I completely messed up Sector 2. You can see me sort of going all over the place in my first stint here. And it's just not really going well, going very wide there as well. Sector 2 was awful. You can see I'm 1.2 seconds down on our teammate's time. Verstappen currently on provisional pole in Q1. We're 1.2 seconds down already, which is really atrocious when you think about it. As we come around these final few corners now... It's going to be real touch and go if we're going to make it into the top 15 so we can actually get into Q2 and try and shoot out for pole position. So as we uh, cross the line, you can see that we are currently in 14th, which at the moment is good enough to qualify for Q2. But with three minutes of a session left, I feel like we need to get another lap in there as we overtake Stroll there just on the Sector 1 uh, change over there, getting pretty close to him. But it leaves us sort of out of shape going through his next few corners. We go quite wide on that corner there. And as we come around these next few corners towards the end of the lap, you can see that timing-wise, we're currently on a 106. We need to get to the line in 117, 118, and we go a bit wide there. It's not looking good. You can see on the delta as well in the top right that we are down by 0 0.4 seconds now. So we're not going to go any faster than this. And at this stage, we cross the line. Still in 14th, I might add. So we're still looking like we're going to go through. However, we've got no more fuel left to do another lap, really. I think I'm trying to push it here to try and get one more lap out there. But you can see I completely overcook it, trying to really push it. We completely bomb out of it, basically. Uh, there's no fuel left in the car. You can see the fuel gauge flashing in the bottom right there. So we go in and we qualify in 17th. Other cars go faster right at the end of the session. And unfortunately, we're out in Q1 in Hungary, which is an absolute disaster for me. But we're trying to mitigate it here. We're going to start on the medium compound tyres instead and try and go really long and late in this race. Pit right at the end of it and hopefully we'll make up a lot of time there. We're going to try and pit on lap 11 because that seems to be the quickest way to do things right now for us. So lap 11 is probably the right, right place for us to pit and hopefully we get a good result. We're starting in between two Williams cars. Kibitza ahead of us, Russell behind us and as five red lights go out here, We've really got to get a move on. We're going to try and switch 
over to the inside of the track as the AI always get magnificent starts. We get an atrocious start and a Williams is overtaking us, which is really bad. But we're trying to try and get as many places overtaken and try and get the grid as quickly as possible by going down the inside. And it works to an extent as we end up being in 14th or 13th. We're in a, a battle with Raikkonen and Albon. Albon sort of breaks a bit earlier and as we break a bit later, try and go around the outside of him, avoiding making contact. But I think we just about get the move done up into 12th place. So already up five places in the opening few corners, which is pretty good. Carlos Sainz is the next target as we break a little bit later in him, try and dive up the inside, a little bit of wheel banging there. Unfortunately, though, Carlos Sainz does regain his place there as we just couldn't quite find the traction there. And if we had tried to push it, we would have really hit him and made a bit of contact. So we've got to stay behind Carlos Sainz for now. But opening lap so far hasn't been too bad. Up five places already, which is quite good. If we can get ourselves into the points within the next few laps, go quite late in this race, I'll be quite happy. It is important to remember that everyone around us, as you can see on the uh, on the top left there, we're on the medium tyres. Everyone else around us is on the softer, soft compound, the softer, soft compound tyres. I meant the faster, soft compound tyres. You know what I meant, obviously. I hope you did at least. But everyone around us is on the faster tyres. So we've got that disadvantage to our in, in our hands. But if we can go longer, we can get on the, the faster tyre later on, set some fast laps very late on in this race and hope that that might help us out. Everyone else will also be com competing with each other in the pits. We hopefully should miss all of that. As we get onto lap three now, we're chasing down Kvyat and Carlos Sainz. Sainz gets past Kvyat, who's got DRS, but we try and go all the way around the outside of them. We don't actually make it though, because Kvyat comes right back at us there. And for the rest of that lap, we were dead behind them. We just can't seem to get past him on this lap. Where we're going to get the overtakes done is in this DRS zone. We've got DRS now on Danny Kvyat for 11th place. We go down the inside this time and we have to for we're forced to go quite wide. And Kvyat comes right back at us. And to be fair, he does get the move done on us completely. And actually, Albon actually tries to get the move done because we, we were really not ready for that caught out by Kvyat he bangs tires with us so that slows us down a little bit not getting too good traction Albon sort of comes out of nowhere to get the move done on us this time though on the inside of turn one on lap five now we're trying to get the move done on Kvyat slightly more aggressive this time given he had the aggressive stance on us the lap before but this time on lap five we get the move done and we're not quite making the progress I wanted to we're on lap five now and only up to 11th I wanted to be in the top 10 by this stage so it's not looking like a like a great race for us right now. But pretty quickly, we catch up with Carlos Sainz. So at that point, lap five was a good five seconds ahead of us. We're now on lap seven. Looking like we're going to set the fastest lap of the race, by the way, as well at the moment, as Carlos Sainz is now less than a second ahead of us on lap seven. And we need to try and get the DRS move done on him. We're up into 10th now. I think someone must have pitted on a lap before that as well. And as you can see there, Sainz is going to the pits. You also saw the notification saying that our teammate Verstappen was in the pits as well. So we need to make this next lap count. We need to go really fast on it. Are we going to get fastest lap here not in the end we're down slightly we weren't particularly fast through sector three so we just avoid or we say just avoid that sounds quite like a negative we just miss out on getting fastest lap of the race but through pit stops and current other people going for the pits we are now fourth track position wise we're probably not that high though i think once we pit we've dropped down a little bit but we've got daniel ricardo to catch up with now he's in p8 as we come around the penultimate corners i think it's likely that he's going to be pitting you can see on the mini map that you can see that a mercedes and a ferrari also pitting ricardo is now pitting as we enter onto lap nine we are going to be leading this race however i think just about every other car has pitted whereas we haven't pitted yet. So we need to get some really fast laps in. You can see in the top right, we just set a green lap there, which means it's a pretty fast lap for us. So we're in a good working range for these tyres at the moment. We're going pretty fast at the moment, so there's no need to pit right now. You can see our tyre wear is still around 25%, so it's pretty good. As we get onto lap 10, though, you can see that the gap to Hamilton behind us after he's made his pit stop is 8 seconds, which is a bit poor at the moment. As you can see, it's now dropped down to 7.8 seconds, by the next sector so at this point i'm thinking well actually it's probably a good idea to start my pit stop now we're meant to pit on lap 11 but hamilton is gaining at half a second a sector at the moment on us and that's a big gap so we need to pit early to avoid losing even more time to him to try and get the best outcome possible for us so we're in the pit stops now swapping on to the soft compound tyres. Hamilton's overtaken us there, as is Valtteri Bottas, and it, now it's sort of a race against time and against these cars that were behind us. If we finish, if we come out, sorry, in, in P10 or better, then that's progress for us. And you can see we're coming out maybe in P9 in a battle with Ricardo. Ricardo just gets past us. So we're in P10, 
but I think that's progress from where we, we we ended up earlier on. So that's quite good for us. Now battling with Ricardo for P9. If we can get past him quickly on fresh tyres, that's going to be good news for us. It means we're going to have a lot of pace. Ricardo goes very slow into that corner. We actually hit the back of him. We don't end up breaking a front wing. I think we touched him very lightly. But Ricardo going slowly on his mediums. We're on fresh soft. So we should be really, really fast at the end of this race. And we're trying to now gain on Magnussen and Max Weber ahead of us. Or Lucas Weber. I keep calling him Max. I get told from the comment section all the time. But I am just committed to calling him Max Weber now. I'm not really sure where it came from. But I'm just committed to that. And on lap 11 now as we head on to lap 12 we've got DRS on Kevin Magnus and he's also got a DRS on Weber ahead of him so he's still pretty fast but we're going to try and dive down the inside of both cars now we end up going pretty wide because of it and I think there was a slight bit of contact with Weber I mean it's a bit unavoidable that I'm going to say it, it was my fault completely I shouldn't have gone for the dive but I'm going to say it was unavoidable as we get two overtakes in one corner which is absolutely fantastic and up into P7 now and now we've got a couple of laps to chase down Sergio Perez in the racing point ahead of us to try and salvage something from this race. If we get into a top six, I'll claim that as a success after the poor qualifying because top six is where we probably should be racing with our teammate and, of course, the two Ferraris and the two Mercedes. Unfortunately, though, it does take quite some time to bridge that gap to Sergio Perez. Now on lap 15, trying to get the overtake done on him. He's obviously got a Mercedes engine in that racing point, so he's still going to be pretty quick. He's got a good engine, and this is quite an engine-heavy track, so no wonder Sergio Perez is doing pretty well. But as we get onto lap 15, we're finally within striking distance of him. It's taken a bit longer than I wanted to to actually catch up to him. But Sergio Perez is ours for the taking. As we enter into sector two of this track, he's right on our tail now. Or well, we're right on his tail, I should say. I'm getting all my analogies wrong today in this video. But we're right on his tail as we try and get a move done before we head into the chicane here. As we try and go for it with a little bit of wheel banging there. Probably a slightly unfair on my part. I probably should have resisted an overtake. But I saw the opportunity and I went for it. No real damage to either car. No penalties for either car. I think it's classed as a racing incident, perhaps. A bit aggressive on my part, but it's no more than what Max Verstappen did to uh, Charles Leclerc in real life in uh, in Austria, I don't think. And as we enter onto lap 16 now, or come to the end of lap 16, you can see that we are three and a half seconds behind Sebastian Vettel now. So we're starting to gain some ground on the cars ahead of us. As their tyres start to go off, we're still on the faster soft compound tyre. And we're getting pretty close to the two Ferraris and the Mercedes ahead of us, as you can see there. So if we can get past them, potentially we've got a podium on our hands today but we've only got two laps to do it in as we enter onto lap 17 now you can see that the gap's already gone from three and a half to 3.2 seconds now which is really good and as we come towards the end of lap 17 now we're really within visible distance of them we can see them now they're so close to us and as we come over the, the line to sector three, you can see that we've taken the gap down to 2.1 seconds now. We are gaining incredibly fast on the cars ahead of us as they battle with each other as well. They're slowing each other down by battling with each other. And as we come on to the last lap, there's every chance that we could do it. As we enter into sector two now, we're within two seconds of the cars ahead now. But we've got half a lap to do it as uh, Bevan Butler has been overtaken by both the Ferraris now. And Devin Butler's the one suffering. We're getting closer and closer. But as we come towards the end of this race, it's, I just don't think it's going to be enough. If we had an extra, extra one lap even, I'm going to say an extra two lap, but even if we had one extra lap, there's potential that we could have overtaken these guys. Unfortunately for us, though, it's not quite to be. I'm really pushing the car, and the tyres are starting to go off for us a little bit now as well. And you can see us going very wide on that corner. They'll try and really push it and lose some of the grip. You can see we're on a red lap as well, which means it's not a particularly fast lap. So as Lewis Hamilton wins the race and we come around the penultimate corners, although we've gained massive amounts of times on the car ahead of us, uh, it's just not going to be quite enough to get past them. Again, if we had another two laps, I think we could have been on the podium here today. But it wasn't to be, but we will take 6th place, 11 places gained in that race, which I'm really, really happy with. So after the, the dismal qualifying session, I think it's a pretty good place to be. You can see that Max Verstappen, our teammate, got 2nd in the end, which is fantastic for us. So at least Red Bull are going to be taking some decent points home there which I'm really, really pleased with. We stay third in the standings, but we do lose ground in the battle with Charles Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton. 65 points behind Hamilton now. 
That is a monumental challenge for us as we enter into the second half of the season. If we want to win the Drivers' Championship, we've got to do well in the second half of the season. We're now 88 points behind Mercedes as well, uh, but not too far behind Ferrari, still within striking distance of them. So hopefully we can overtake them in the constructor standings pretty soon. But Mercedes, well, that's a different game altogether. As we head into the next race, we want to get a few more upgrades. So another engine upgrade on the way, because we need to upgrade that quite a lot. We've still got a week left on the chassis upgrade, so no more chassis upgrades. But we've still got 1,400 points to spend. So we're going to go into the downforce and try and get some downforce upgrades as well. So we're going to go for a big one there. That should be quite a substantial downforce upgrade for us. So three upgrades coming, one in Belgium, one in Singapore, and one in Italy, which should be pretty decent for us. Hopefully, come the end of the season, we'll be far and away the best car on the grid we can also change our gearbox as well now we've completed another six races on this gearbox so we've got grounds to change it to a brand new one so we'll have a brand new gearbox for the next race in spa in belgium which is going to be quite exciting and that is going to be the next race spa one of the best tracks in the entire formula one season however i'm not particularly good at it so i am very concerned going into the next race that uh, i'm not going to pick up some good points because spa for me is a really challenging track so uh, i'll see you next time for that race hopefully we get some good points but uh no promises so until then have a good one goodbye